on cash flow management. The financial decision making of business owners is incredibly poor and it's an indictment of their accountants whose advice they generally follow. Here's a classic illustration. I was called in by an insurance agent who wanted me to explain some technical matters to the client and his accountant. When I arrived, uh, the situation was the accountant had advised his client to reduce his contributions to his retirement plan. Basically, because there was a liquidity problem, the client uh, was short of cash that he needed to fund operations for the next financial year. And the accountant's solution was, well, if you don't contribute so much into the retirement plan, then you'll have more cash. The logic was uh, basically faulty right, right from the start. And the client's concern was he had to follow what the accountant was saying because he relied on the accountant to give him the good oil. Unfortunately, the oil wasn't good at all. And in fact, by reducing his contributions to the retirement program, it actually meant the client was throwing away some useful tax deductions, which actually could have resulted in having more cash after tax rather than less. There's some other elements, though, that uh, go along with it. But uh, the issue that the client faced, basically, at the end of the year, just like most businesses, there is a bill, a tax bill to pay. And let's say your um, cash, before we look at tax, is 100, right? Could be 100 grand, could be 100 mil. But let's just call it 100. Now, by paying tax and this uh, client, his uh, tax rate was around about 30 cents in the dollar. Um, now with the reduced rate, corporate tax rate, to 21, um, if you add on things like um, state tax, then it's going to come in around about 26. Um, <coughs> just to make things simple, easy to calculate for, for the numbers, We'll use a tax rate a little bit higher of 30 cents in the dollar. And it's not a matter of the calculations uh, need to be spot on. It's a matter of understanding the concept. So the client was looking at paying about 30 cents in the dollar tax and being left with 70. And that 70 is what he needed to fund his business in the next financial year that is, to pay for payrolls and operating expenses. And without the 70, then the client had a real liquidity problem and his business basically was stopped. So the accountant you know, came up with his sort of incredible advice. And uh, when I arrived, I basically um, tried to sort out the logic. And the first question was, well, basically, your Mr. Client and Mr. Accountant, they're making a decision to actually throw away 30% of the gross revenue so you'll end up being able to hang on to 70% to fund the business, thus solve the liquidity problem. But in the process, you're throwing away some tax benefits and also in this instance, throwing away retirement benefits, which the larger contribution to the retirement plan would produce. There's an alternative, a simple alternative in this particular case, and that was borrow the extra liquidity, borrow the extra cash that you need to fund your business. How much will it cost to borrow, say, 100 grand? To borrow 100 grand depends on what the prevailing interest rate is. And in terms of this client, again, some uh, 
ridiculous advice. I don't know how the accountant managed to sort of uh, hang in there with the client, but the client was paying overdraft rates on uh, finance and he was paying sort of around about 12% for money. And he also had this problem that the overdraft had to be repaid pretty prompt and therefore it um, was only of limited value for a limited amount of time. Um, the simple solution here was the client, he's actually uh, a real estate uh, principal and the client actually owned property. He had a home mortgage on it. He had equity uh, in that home which he could actually borrow against. Uh, that is increase the amount that he was borrowing and at the at the time the prevailing interest rate was around about 6%. That is half the rate that the client was paying on overdraft. So prompt solution, simple, um, get rid of the overdraft and increase the first mortgage, halve the uh, interest expense and that in itself uh, went a long way to providing a bit more liquidity. However, that was only half the job. The other half of the job was increasing the amount of the loans. So, borrow an extra 70 grand or 100 grand, whatever the amount is that you need. In this particular instance, the client needed 70 for the uh, operations, the business operations for the next year. He didn't actually have to borrow 100 grand. So, borrow 70 at 6%. How does that compare to throwing away 30% of the revenue that he was producing? Certainly a much better proposition. In terms of the um, 100K, 100K was actually put into the retirement plan, fully tax deductible, which basically saved the client the 30% and boosted his retirement money. And in terms of the cost, 6% 6 and that was before tax. When you have a look at it after tax, it certainly drops down. I'm not going to bother calculating it. You can do that. But after tax, the borrowing cost is infinitesimal compared to the 30% of tax that was being thrown away because the accountant didn't have the smarts in terms of managing cash flow and looking sort of at the financial elements that this business owner was involved in. Now, it's a pretty straightforward um, example of the paucity of financial management decisions and you can't really blame the client too much because he was relying on the accountant but um, I think the accountant really should be shot. Um, anyhow, that's just sort of uh, an example of the bad financial decision making and the advice that's actually coming, not from all accountants, but certainly from this particular accountant. And he, he was sort of professionally qualified. Makes you wonder what those qualifications actually mean. Okay, until next time, that's uh, about it for today.